What up, Melvin7 here. I'm sorry this match review is a bit late. I am going to be doing them for the rest of the season. I'm also going to be doing Premier League predictions and everything, and I'll have my full league prediction when the transfer window ends, purely because there's just too many question marks over so many uh, squads, top six teams, as well as the rest of the league. So I'm just going to wait. Uh, I'll probably still get the table completely wrong, but, you know, uh, I think that'll give me the best chance of actually being close to right although probably not but anyway uh yeah the reason i didn't do it yesterday i was out for my uh, mate's birthday but uh yeah i was out all day i watched the the united game obviously and oh oh my god that's exactly what i want to see from a manchester united team like it was just phenomenal i know it's west ham and you know they've brought in some players they were missing a couple of players uh like antonio lanzini I suppose, I don't even know if he'll get into their squad with the players they've got now though, but certainly Antonio, he was very, very key for them last season, but uh, still, like, they, you know, they, they've still got to get Hernandez, get Anatovic, get them all used to the actual team, but still, they're a team that most people have predicted to finish top 10, and uh, this is a team that we drew against last season, and we completely demolished them on all areas of the park, uh, it was phenomenal, like, it was so good to see our match of the day, like, just constant praise. We haven't had that in years. Like, literally, there wasn't a negative thing to say about us yesterday. Even uh, Billich and uh, Winston Reid, when they were interviewed, literally just said United were dominant in every single aspect, which was true. And uh, Lukaku, honestly, he just... <laughs> I would say he doesn't seem to give a shit, but that's completely, like, wrong. What I mean is... He just doesn't seem to be phased at all by, you know, Manchester United, by playing at Old Trafford, all this. He just seems to have been there for years, like, as though he's done this all his life. So that's brilliant. When a player's got that mentality and they just fit seamlessly into a team, it's it's phenomenal. And uh, I'm so, so happy we've got Romelu Lukaku. You know, you can tell the squad looks ridiculously happy when you're seeing their training videos or whatever. Jose Mourinho's talking about the squad, Harmony. Uh, everyone just seems really, really happy together. There's a there's a real togetherness about the squad, and it seems as though, to be honest, they all like each other, which I know sounds like really, really, you know, obvious or just... You wouldn't really say it's one of the major things, but in a team, squad harmony and all that, like, if the players... If the players can have banter together and, you know, they, they enjoy each other company, then they are going to perform a lot better. And it was shown on the pitch. Of course, it's only one game. But uh, on to the goals. Uh, Lukaku made a, well, I would say instant impact. But uh, it was like 30 minutes, I think. It was wonderful. Uh, it started from Nemanja Matic. Uh, winning possession, uh, intercepting a ball, Rashford latches onto it, breaks through, then Matic continues and does a dummy run to the left, which confuses West Ham's defenders, and Lukaku's pointing exactly where he wants the through ball to go at the same time, Rashford puts it in there, and Lukaku, you know, that first touch, only needs one touch, doesn't he, and it's in. Uh, and then the second goal is whipped in, uh, a fantastic Mkhitaryan cross, and an easy Lukaku header in the second half, just phenomenal, it was so good to see, he would have completed a hat-trick if it wasn't for Pablo Zabaleta's brilliant clearance, um, not clearance, like block, it, it was going straight into the bottom left for that Lukaku hat-trick, uh, but unfortunately that wasn't to be, but we still scored afterwards, Martial's brought on, and in 10 minutes, like, uh, I like Jesse Lingard, okay, but I just, you know, he should be a squad player at the very best, Martial has so much more talent, so does Rashford, so does Juan Mata, and it's annoying when you see Jesse Lingard play. I've got nothing against him. You know, he loves the club. But when other players are sat on the bench and then you see Lingard, who got one goal and two assists in the Premier League last season, yes, he's got a phenomenal work rate. But, you know, you need your attacking players to do more than that. And uh, Martial got a goal and an assist, which is pretty much near what Jesse Lingard did all of last season. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great through ball. Uh, I think it was Mkhitaryan, I, I can't remember who put him through, but anyway, Martial uh, slots it in, 3-0, uh, it's a typical Martial finish really, and then later on, a few minutes later, the last minute of the game, Pogba with a finesse to make it 4-0, Pogba scores, Lukaku scored 2, Martial scores, Mkhitaryan's assisting, Mata's playing really well, Matic is the linchpin we've been crying out for, you know, it just baffles me, like, I've never seen such a strange transfer and such a transfer that's 
like shifted opinions so quickly. When we signed him, yeah, a lot of pundits went, oh, that's a big signing. But then you've got a lot of pundits and a lot of other people who are, who are just laughing at it, like saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, Chelsea's main midfielders, Kante, why do they need Matic, etc. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, Man United, the paying 35 million rise into 40 million for a 29-year-old. And then they see him play, um, like, 45 minutes in the friendly, playing again, a full game against Real Madrid, full game against... Uh, West Ham when he's barely been at the club a few days and he's just been phenomenal he's just literally been everywhere it's madness like how he went under the radar last season for Chelsea and uh, I, I know I think it was three years ago when Jose Mourinho won the title for Chelsea um, that Matic was dubbed as one of the key reasons for that Chelsea changed their system of course uh, well the second year everyone knows what happens capitulated the players gave up and uh, Mourinho got sacked, but then when Conte comes in, uses a 3-4-3, and everyone's raving about Kante, and rightly so, because of the, the Leicester title win, um, but yeah, it seems as though Kante and Matic worked perfectly for them, and that made the 3-4-3 system so good for Chelsea, and now without him, they, they look lost against Burnley, like, this was the best um, explanation for why Chelsea are missing Matic, and why we needed Matic, like the two results this weekend, it couldn't have said it more perfectly, like honestly I'm, I'm blown away, like I didn't expect him to be this good, like because it's just not a player that you, when he plays for a rival team, unless you know there's an analysis on match of the day or whatever, you don't really like look at his game, you don't really focus on him, you just you know, take take it for granted, kind of, uh, when it's that kind of holding midfielder role. But then when you're watching him on your team and you're giving, you know, you're making a conscious decision to look at his game, it's madness. Like, he, he's just something we haven't had, something that breaks down attacks. And it's just a clever, intelligent Jose Mourinho player. And thank God we got him. Uh, and I can't stop raving about him, even more than Lukaku. And Lukaku's just blown me away by how absurdly good he's done already. Like, in pre-season, he scored... Um, three goals, then scores against Real Madrid, scores two against West Ham. So that's three in two competitive games. Madness, absolutely man uh, madness. Lindelof, it seems as though Jose Mourinho is doing what he did with Henrik Mkhitaryan last season. And uh, he's just breaking him in nice and easy. I've got to say, like I said last season, if it was a choice between Smalling and Jones in terms of centre-backs, when they're both fit, I would pick Jones 100%. And Jones... I never really wanted to leave the club until he just keeps getting these stupid injuries. Like last season, he was phenomenal for half of it, and then he got injury after injury after injury again. If he can eradicate that, he is a phenomenal centre-back, and he complements Bailly really, really well. And then when Lindelof gets brought in and, you know, he can actually adapt to the Premier League, I'm sure he'll be a fantastic centre-back. Jose Mourinho knows them very well. So we'll have a strong defence that's able to rotate. So... You know, I, I've got big confidence on Jones if he can stay fit. And I suppose when Lindelof comes in and the game time gets kind of shifted around them, uh, it'll probably be better for Jones as well. He'll be able to be a bit more fit. Uh, there's also rumours of Valencia having a, a recurring knee injury. He needs regular ice packs or something. And uh, Fabinho's asked to leave Monaco again. He kind of reiterated that in his uh, press conference when they won 4-1. So... Let's hope we can get him. I, I would say we would potentially need another winger as well, but if if Valencia got injured, I would say that's more of an issue because on, on the left or the right, we, we have got like Martial, we've got Rashford, we've got Mkhitaryan, we've got Mata, who can all play there. Yes, I would say we need another one, but more importantly, would be a right-back. So if we could only get one more, I would you know, take Fabinho because if Valencia does get injured, we don't really have anyone that can play there who's fully confident about it. Lindelof can, uh, so maybe, you know, that could be the backup, but it, it just, we'll, we'll have to see. The transfer window's got a few weeks left, but yeah, as for this game, just blown away, so, so happy, and I've never, ever felt this, well, I haven't felt as confident since Alex Ferguson was at the club, like, you know, I'm I'm so hyped for this Premier League season. And I genuinely, although I've said it in previous years, oh yeah, we can win the league. It's always been half-hearted uh, from Moyes, Louis van Gaal, uh, Jose's first season. I did kind of have that belief, but then, you know, it wavered and I was like, oh yeah, half-heartedly we can. But now, literally I'm saying, yeah, we can win the Premier League. There's some unreal teams, Man City, of course. 
Uh, you know, there's there's other teams like Spurs if they can keep their start next eye. If Chelsea can find out their problems, Arsenal, Liverpool, whatever. But I genuinely do believe that we can win the title. So let's keep this up and uh, take it into, I think, Swansea's our next game. Hopefully we can get another demolition job there. Hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video and yeah, peace.